Hey Thomas, I uh, just listened to some um, Ube Delina on iTunes, and I must say I really enjoyed it. Your um, description sold me, and uh, this is my second take because apparently, yeah, when you leave iTunes open, try to record a video on uh, YouTube's direct upload, it's not gonna work. Uh, the volume, at least, is is gonna be. Uh, the mic's gonna be off, so. Um, but you mentioned the uh, discussion, or I, you know, I don't even know if you, can, if you can call it a discussion. It's more like uh, a war, a war of words between to be well, Gary and Mendham, um, myself, and uh, to be serious, and you know, others have been participating in text, and certainly this is an ongoing discussion between many people on YouTube. Um, and that is, you know, most recently it's been epigenetics, but that's just what, what would, that's the surface. I mean, really we're, we're arguing over the nature and scope of science. Um, because, you know, I, I get accused a lot of trying to make science prove some spiritual view of reality. Um, and, you know, I would, I would want to well, counter that and say that, Science doesn't prove anything. Science is a method. Um, science is, is a is a collection of techniques, which, when you perform them, uh, you experience or observe certain results, which have been, you know, validated and recorded and peer reviewed, um, and through this continual experiment and uh, peer review process, we come to learn how to manipulate nature in various ways to derive various results uh, and the most um, beneficial application of science is technology whether it's medical technology um, or energy technology or uh, military technology that's what we use our science for science is a way of of controlling the natural world um, it certainly doesn't give us complete control over the natural world. Medicine is not going to cure death, um, despite what some transhumanists say. Uh, if I'm proven wrong in 20 years, then I'll eat my words, but I'm, I'm skeptical that human beings will want or be able to live forever because of nanotechnology or, or anything else. Um, but that's, that's science, as far as I understand it. Um, science really doesn't tell us about the nature of reality. That is the, the province of either uh, religion, traditionally, or philosophy, natural philosophy. Um, but science, obviously, has really captured the imagination of society in the last, um, really, only since the 19th century, and though the scientific revolution began uh, really in the 1600s, I guess, um, but science has, has captured the, the social imagination to the extent that we have completely mistaken technology, the ability to manipulate with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding. Um, we've, we've just reduced uh, the latter to the former. We've reduced wisdom to practical technological application um, and you know this isn't to say there's anything wrong with technology it's just this reduction of of meaning of the living world the body of Christ as um, you know mystical Catholics and Christians would say we've reduced that to a machine because in order to uh, devise means of controlling and manipulating nature, it is most appropriate to view it as a collection of parts which through their uh, regular interaction um, obeying physical laws with one another produce certain predictable outcomes um, which can be described mathematically. But to actually live in a world um, which means, you know, interacting with other people, uh, you know, 
eating and, and getting sick and, uh, you know, falling in love and having sex and doing drugs and, you know, and all the, the full spectrum of human experience available to you, you can't really treat that as a collection of parts um, that can be easily measured. You know, you can't separate your subjective experience, your living, embodied, existential uh, reality. You can't separate it. It's not a subject observing an object. So you're faced with moment to moment having to uh, engage that mystery. Um, and science is never going to get us out of that obligation. It's never going to give us a collection of, of books, um, you know, much less one book, or even, you know, a, an internet database of terabytes worth of information. It will never be enough to tell us exactly what reality is and what to do to get what we want out of that reality. Um, it's an unrealistic expectation for science, which again, I think, it's just a method. Um, and as a method, it is a powerful, powerful tool. Um, but that's all it is. It's a tool. And um, sometimes in a rush to, I don't know, progress beyond the, the you know, dim-witted supernaturalism of the past, we, we leap onto this technological bandwagon where, you know, we can relieve all suffering through some yet-to-be-invented means. That, to me, uh, is, is quite a destructive and dangerous and violent religion, um, as much as any religion to come before it. Uh, so, you know, that's why I sometimes tend to uh, not take the side of, of those who see science as the Messiah. Um, and while I do admit that my worldview is such that science is one aspect of it, and I don't, I don't bow down to the facts as various scientists see them, I understand that science is a method, science is a work in progress. And so when I try to incorporate it into my larger relationship with reality, um, I take it into consideration, among many other uh, facets of, of life as I experience it. Um, so, you know, if I, if I come off as uh, trying to say science proves this and science proves that about how wonderful and beautiful and spiritual reality is, I'm not, I'm not trying to use science in that way. Science can't prove anything to us about the nature of reality. It just, it, that's not what it's about. Um, it's about manipulating reality. To measure it, you must manipulate it. You know, and this is uh, why I know you commented in one of my videos where I said uh, biology is an impossible science. You know, you can't see how a living cell works without killing it. So, if you want mechanical knowledge of a cell, you're pretty much, I mean, it's like an oxymoron, almost, I think. You know, not that we shouldn't view cells in that way, um, because we can learn, we can come up with, you know, medical cures for various diseases and such. But we have to be careful because those cells are conscious, those cells experience, and their pains may not be as intense or deep um, or threatening as our pains, but we need to nonetheless respect them as living. Um, in other words, corporations shouldn't be able to own living organisms, even if they change a gene or two, you know the rest of the 99.9% .9 of the genes in there have evolved for billions of years without any hand, uh, any involvement uh, on the part of the, uh, the corporation. Um, but, um, yeah, I kind of went off on a tangent here, Thomas, but I, I thank you for your, uh, for your video, and um, we'll see uh, how the dialogue continues from here, and hopefully it is a dialogue, because so far it's been more of a... Uh, a food fight.
I think, but uh, take it easy.